Okay, I tied this up for you. This is, in a nutshell, what I followed to lose my weight when I went from 165. Now, I, like I said, I'm staying between 125 to 128. Um, and I seem to be able to hold that because of the way I've been dieting and I stick to this meal plan and I'm stuck to it and I decided that it's going to be a lifestyle choice and I'm going to stick to it for the rest of my life. I will put this on the very front and the very end of the blog I'm doing for you so that it will be here so you can save it and, want, and uh, take a picture of it if you like to and it will be on my channel for you to look back to and refer to. Have a good day. Alright, so I've done seven days worth of what I eat in a day. So now you guys kind of know how my diet plan works. My thing is, my diet plan is not just a diet. It's a lifestyle choice. I figure, I, just, I feel that any diet that you go on needs to be something that you could stick to easily for the rest of your life. Something that you would enjoy instead of something that would be a mundane and torture for you because... Um, if you want to lose weight and you want to keep that weight off, what you're going to do is you need something that you can stick to all the time and feel comfortable sticking to. So, you know, you do these fad diets, it's like the, the Atkins or the keto or the, or the intermittent fasting. It works great for a little bit, but what happens and when you go back to eating regular normal food, you end up gaining all your weight back. And then what do you become? You become a yo-yoer because you are not stable with um, your diet so that's why I created the meal plan that I have created so I am took a video so it'd be easy for you to attach to the front of this and it's about 40 seconds it gives you a chance to not only read the meal plan so it's, I'm giving you a visual as well as you being able to hear me tell you and talk to you and explain it to you as well as being able to take a picture of it with your smartphone so you can save it to your smartphone if you want to and then you could be like okay now what did she say about this you can look back at it and then be like okay yeah that's why she excluded this item or that item and so you'll understand and be able to look back at it and understand it a little better so first thing is first you are just beginning your diet so when you are just beginning your diet i want you to realize all of this that I've done for these last seven days, I've hit my goal weight. So I am just maintaining now from now on. This is going to be the way I eat for the rest of my life. And I'm maintaining. So um, I'm not having to go super strict to really lose the weight that I need to lose. I did a couple of days of really strict, you know, portion sizes for you. So you kind of see what I did when I was going super strict. Um, but just remember, portion control is so important. You need to make sure that it's about the size of your fist is your portion of your meat, your veggies, whatever you were having for your meal. Um, that is one, one suggestion that is given by a lot of nutritionists, a lot of fitness trainers, that it's about the size of your fist. Okay? So, let's get started. First two weeks to a month, you need to go so strict. Super, super, super strict. And I mean... Why you have to go so this and you have to go so strict that you are detoxing? It's like you're detoxing and cleansing your body of all the junk food that you've been eating that has caused you to gain all the weight that you have on you right now that you are wanting to get rid of. So you need to detox your body. So that means you have to cut out sugary treats, sugary drinks, very little carbs. So that means you are going instead of. Um, Drinking sugary drinks, you're gonna have a low calorie or no calorie drinks. Like I like to have my pop, so I like to eat, have drink diet pop. Diet pop works great. Or those are, now they have those no sugar zero pops. It's great for diabetics as well as ones who are trying to diet and sticking to a strict calorie diet. Okay, um, low calorie juices is good for you because sometimes it has the nutrition in there that you need. And you need to drink lots and lots of water. And I mean, you probably want to have eight full, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Um, so it's hard to get that in. I know sometimes, uh, trust me, it's hard for me with my work schedule. Since I work from 34 to 40 hours a week, it really makes it really tough because I can't just constantly be drinking. Um, <laughs> so, um, but and when you have the water at the beginning, you want to add lemon into it. Do not add any sugar to it. Just add lemon and shake it up. 
lemon juice concentrate is fine as well or buying the real fresh lemons and squeezing them into your water because lemon and water together makes a great diuretic it helps you lose whatever water weight you've gained so you definitely want to stick to something like that also having coffee like I told you I have mine with Truvia or Splenda because Truvia and Splenda add sweetness to it but it's zero calories but it also comes from a natural plant base so it's safer for you than like eating sweet and low or equal or something like that okay so um, I do that in my coffee and coffee is also a great diuretic if you can get yourself used to drinking coffee sometimes you want to do it and try making it in a very weak form at the beginning and get used to the flavor of it and then you can increase the strength of it um, cut out carbs and breads natural carbs are okay like what you would get in protein bars shakes maybe potatoes sweet potatoes if you have a potato small potato or sweet potato once in a while with your lunch um, nuts and beans is okay those carbs are okay but don't go and again stay away from the sugars try to eat no bread now I then the example I gave you on day seven was no bread I had no bread with my chicken patty I cut it into pieces instead and I put it in with my green beans so whatever bread I had was the breading that was on the actual chicken patty I didn't add any extra carbs okay so that's what I mean by no bread I used to do it where I'd have my my portion size of green beans okay and I'd have a chicken patty with mustard mind you mustard has zero calories that's why I use mustard a lot when I'm dieting really strict okay so why do you want to go so strict not only I just at the beginning told you for the first month you want to go super super strict okay it's not just because you're detoxing your body of all the chemicals and all the junk food and the fat that's in your system that you need to flush out so that you can get started on a really healthy diet the other reason you need really strong portion control and to cut out all those things is because your body feeds on that it's gotten used to you eating that so you have to retrain yourself you got to retrain yourself to enjoy healthy things fruits veggies are okay um, and that's what the kind of things you want to eat and so you want to eat things like a lot of fruits lentils beans white meats like pork fish chicken turkey nuts is a great snack um, baked potatoes are okay if you are craving chips veggie straws nuts dried fruit dried fruit is amazing if you're having a sweet craving um, also um, and so it takes care of your sweet tooth okay you have to do this also in portion controls and I suggest you eat every two hours so every two hours so like first you would start out like I do with a bowl of oatmeal and a banana and maybe that smoothie and your cup of coffee so two hours later you're going to have a V8 that's what I like to have okay and that you don't have to have a V8 have something that you enjoy drinking that is low calorie I cannot stress enough low calorie so two hours later you have the V8 I'm just giving you an example two hours later you eat your lunch so you have your protein bar and I have a protein bar and I have yogurt okay next two hours comes up okay when I was dieting really strict I am a chip eater so what do I what did I do how did I handle that I had veggie straws or I had a, a baked chip but I got him in those little you know how you can buy those snack packages that you put in your the kids lunch boxes that's the way I would buy it and so that way my portion size was already made for me so I wasn't sitting here dumping a whole almost a whole bag or half a bag of chips into a sandwich bag for my lunch or have to sit here one two three because it says serving size you can have 20 okay so I'm counting out 20 veggie straws you know how annoying that was for me 20 veggie straws would be counted out put in this sandwich bag literally so that I did not go over my serving size so you have to do that because what happens is every two hours if you eat you continually give your body and your system something to chew on 
your stomach it's important for your metabolism to trick your metabolism your metabolism has to have something to munch on or to chew on all the time so therefore if you don't eat you store fat so you stress that again you don't eat you store fat that's why intermittent fasting is bad for you because what happens is at the beginning boom you drop your weight fast but what if you keep it up and keep it up and try to make it a lifestyle choice your weight goes all the way back up why because it says you're starving me so i'm holding on to oh there's there's this one hint of gram of fat in this in this this pet and this chip or whatever i ate okay what does your body do hold on to it because you're not feeding it you're not taking care of it okay so it's important that you eat every two hours also you need to go super strict again for the first two weeks to a month because you are um shrinking your stomach think about it when you ate before maybe you ate two huge cheeseburgers and a large fry and a large coke and then you had a dessert along with that um no that wasn't okay because you know how many calories you just took in so your body has gotten used to you eating those large meals so for the first two weeks to a month, it is the hardest month to get through. And you should celebrate if you get through those two in two weeks to two months. And you are able to handle that because you're going to be hungry. And I'm going to warn you all the time. Because your stomach is this big. Because it's been eating that huge portion size that I just mentioned. So now you're going to have to take your stomach from here to hear so it takes two months two weeks to a month to shrink your stomach and the first two weeks is the hardest to get through let me tell you I've been a yo-yo I know <laughs> so once you get past that in the first two weeks to two into a month you're doing great the thing is when you get um, to your first goal weight then you can start introducing things back in very very slowly but i mean very very slowly you don't want to overdo any of this okay you still need to be careful what you're eating and taking in so the thing that i stress the most when i'm talking to people about dieting is that um i wrote this down as an example because i thought it was a good one so let's say you're 300 pounds You've been taught and trained and been having a hard time getting on, starting on dieting and exercising regular. Why? Because you knew that you're, this was going to probably take you a full year. You're going to have to stick to a strict diet for a full year in order to see the results that you want. So let's say you're 300 pounds. This is just, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I don't think that is 300 pounds right now. But let's say you are 300 pounds. Let's say your goal weight is within a year, I want to step on that scale a year from today. Let's say you start your diet right now, today, after you get off and finish watching this vlog. And from, from day one to a full year rotation, you want to be at 150 pounds. So you go from 300 down to 150. How are you going to reach that goal? Well, here's the thing. Your goal weight every month is going to be 12 and a half pounds. You're going to want to lose 12 and a half pounds every single month for a full year in order to hit 150 pounds by the end of that. So that's why you need a diet that you can stick to and you can maintain. You also have to make sure you are exercising at the beginning, the first two weeks to a month. I suggest you you be working out at least six days a week. 30 minutes a day, six days a week, 30 minutes a day. You can do it. Trust me, it may seem like it's hard. How long, how many, how much time do you sit playing on your smartphone? Looking through Facebook, looking through YouTube, looking through Snapchat. How long do you sit watching movies? How long do you sit playing video games? All you have to do is dial, is take out 30, a 30 minute chunk out of all, the, of all that time. And you have got your workout in for the day. Okay? So you can do it. You just have to get the mindset that that's, this is what you really want. So here's the other thing. Why did I stress? If you notice, I didn't mention red meat. 
at all as being one of the choices of meats um, to eat. Here's the reason why. There's a lot of us out there, um, like Bob Harper is one example. There's other examples where you can eat super healthy. You can exercise a lot. But if it's in your genetics to have high cholesterol as you get older, like in my family, you know, it's in our genetics to end up with high cholesterol problems because my dad's body just naturally made high cholesterol. So he could, he stuck to a super strict um, diet to where he didn't have any cholesterol in his diet. I mean, hardly any, none. We worked very hard to make sure there was no cholesterol in any of the food that he ate. And he still ran a little high because it was just in his genes. So red meat is horrible, horrible when it comes to cholesterol. It is very bad for you. So if you have heart disease that runs in your family, you have strokes that runs in your family history, you have high cholesterol that runs in your family history, you better stay away from red meat. Stay away from it. Once in a while you're craving it, like... Once in a blue moon, I'll allow myself to have a steak. Once in a blue moon, I'll allow myself to have um, a cheeseburger because sometimes I just crave it. Because red meat is also good for if you're anemic because it's high in iron. So I understand why some people need the red meat in their diet. But don't overdo it. Don't eat red meat more than once a week because it's also very high in cholesterol and can cause the other issues I just mentioned so that's why I made sure to not mention that so okay when you finally get to your first set of go weight like you decide first two in first month you could lose if you're around a 300 pound person you possibly could lose up to 20 pounds in that first month if you stick to your plan and stay super strict on your diet and you exercise five to six days a week 30 minutes a day like I said you could lose up to 20 pounds in your first month okay so then that's when you very slowly when you hit that 20 pounds you're like ah i did it you can celebrate so very slowly you introduce some sweets into your diet you know carbs into your diet but not everything so let's say today i decide i wanted a hamburger I eat the hamburger, but then I go really strict the rest of the day on the calories that I take for the entire rest of the day to make up for that hamburger that I ate. Let's say, um, and for your lunch, you're craving chocolate. Two Hershey's Kisses. Yes, I said two. Two Hershey's Kisses. Or one of those Hershey's mini candy bars that are about this size, this little bitty ones. You know, two of those. There's your snack for the day. I prefer to have my snack. When I was working days where I was working seven to fours and I was working on losing weight, I'd have my snack with my breakfast. The reason I did that is because I had all day long to burn those calories off. All day long to burn my snack off. So then I didn't feel guilty about having a little sweet and shiny treat. I was craving chocolate. I had to have my chocolate that day. I knew the next morning I was craving it real bad the day before. Okay, I had my two pieces of chocolate with my breakfast, went to work, burned all of it off, came home straight from work, got up at 4 o'clock. First thing I did, what did I do? I changed into my workout clothes, and I worked out 30 to 40 minutes. Boom. Every day. That's how I did it. So now, the way I work, I have, it, I have my sweet treat or my snack with my lunch. So it's either you could have, you know, a serving size of your favorite chip, you know, like I said, a small, small mini candy bar and a couple of Hershey's Kisses. Um, a serving size of your favorite chip or a serving size of your favorite sour candy. And boom, you've had your treat for the day. That way you're not completely depriving yourself. You're slowly introducing the car carbs and sweets back into your diet. But you're not binging on it. And you're still going to see results and you're still going to lose weight because it'll still be coming off because you're not overdoing anything. Portion control. Portion control is the key. So once you are easily able to handle only having those little tiny bits each day of a treat and you're doing really good with it, you're not overeating, you're not binging on it, you're not 
you're able to control yourself and stick to that little tiny bit. Then you're ready to introduce Splurge Day. So let's say you've been craving a hamburger, you've been craving fries, you've been craving pancakes, you've been craving, I don't know, a piece of chocolate cake. Guess what you're doing on your Splurge Day? You're going to eat super healthy on some things. And then you're going to make sure you have that chocolate cake. One piece of chocolate cake is all it takes. And I mean savor that cake. Like when I had my peanut butter pie that you seen on Sunday, I savored it. I savored that Pop-Tart. I ate little bites. I made sure I took in all the flavor and just really enjoyed it. Because it was my splurge today. I wanted to make sure that that treat that I've been craving really satisfied me so that I could get through the rest of the week with no problem okay so the last thing that I is important and um, that I feel is very important is um, listen to your body your body will tell you if you are craving something really bad so let's say like for me I ended up giving in and having that hamburger on Wednesday okay and my and my blog for my sixth day which was yesterday um, I'm making this vlog but I won't put it on until tomorrow morning um, so um, the thing is listen to your body because a lot of times if you've been craving that hamburger or that treat for like say over a month or something and that craving will not go away it's just persistently there it usually means that there is something in that item that your body needs so for some reason there was something in that red meat of that hamburger that I needed. Who knows? Maybe I needed an extra boost of iron. And my body was trying to tell me I needed the iron. And I wasn't listening to it. So, a lot of times, if your body is craving something super, super strong and you can't get rid of that craving no matter what you do, then it's time to give in and have it. But again, portion control and don't binge on it. Just have that and then make sure you eat super healthy the rest of them for your breakfast, your your dinner, your snack, things like that. So that way you're not overdoing the calories and that way you're not going completely off bandwagon. So the next day you can pick it up super strict and you get back on that scale at the end of the week or whenever you weigh yourself and be like, okay, I did good. I still lost such and such amount of pounds. But if you start binging, you're going to go up and then you're going to want to give up because you're going to get frustrated. Don't frustrate yourself. Stick to it. Stick to a plan. Stay with it don't stop it that's the key consistency portion control exercise 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 you have to move along with the diet if you don't eat less and move more you will not see results if you do not eat less and move more you will not see results so one more thing and then I'll end this block what if you have food allergies so like I have people I know, a friend that I have at work, but I also had other people I knew in the past who has allergies to nuts. So she probably like, thanks, thanks, you're giving me the suggestion to eat nuts as one of my, in my in-between snacks between breakfast and lunch or, or lunch and dinner. I can't have that because I'm allergic to them. So now what do you want me to do? So if you have problems with nuts, another healthy choice for you is dried fruit, uh, a serving size of baked chips or crunchy veggies that you could put in a baggie and carry with you to work. So, crunch, you know, crunch, what kind of vegetables do you like? Do you like carrot sticks? Do you like celery? What do you like in vegetables, in raw vegetables? That could be your substitute for nuts if you have nut allergies. So, um, and just make sure and everything you're eating a healthy portion a lot of times especially like celery you can eat a whole thing of celery and you probably ate 10 calories of the most okay so it depends on what it is so also for those who are lactose intolerant um, you can't get your calcium in the dairy products and eat the dairy products that normally everybody else does so you are going to want to stick to leafy greens, like dark leafy greens, like kale, um, turnip, uh, spinach, collard greens. If you can stand them, I cannot, 
Some people love sardines. Some people cannot stand them. I've never tried them. I'm not going to lie. I want to try them one time. I've never had them. So if somebody ever is having them around me and they allow me to try one, I probably will try it because I've always wanted to try them. But I don't want to buy a whole thing of sardines because I don't know if I like them. Sardines is great when it comes to calcium. Uh, you could also eat fortified soybeans. Fortified orange juice um, are great for people who are lactose intolerant um, and but need to make sure they get enough calcium in their diets. Um, the other thing is also if to get your protein in. If you're you're a vegan, all of this is perfect for you, including what I mentioned for getting your calcium. Because if you're a vegan, you don't even eat dairy products, okay? So if you're a vegetarian and you're trying to diet um, and you're having a hard time thinking about protein, well, protein is a little easier if you don't have a lot of food allergies because you can have a serving, por serving size portion of beans, nuts, peanut butter, uh, and I personally love, love, love portobello mushrooms. Portobello mushrooms are a great source of protein. If you've ever had a vegetarian hamburger, which I have had once before, um, they usually use a huge, huge, huge slice of a portobello mushroom that's probably about this big that covers the whole entire bun. And that is your meat if you're a vegetarian or vegan. And vegetarians and vegans out there are now shaking their heads, yes. Yes, if you're considering doing a more of a vegan, vegetarian diet to lose your weight. Um, and you want to get, if you can, have a portobello mushroom as a substitute for your hamburger meat. Um, it's a great source of protein, and it actually, they're really good. So, there's my diet plan for you. So, just please make sure that you keep moving, you keep exercising and eating healthy. And don't give up. Don't allow yourself to give up on yourself because that's that's the worst thing you can do is to give up on yourself. Have a great day, everybody. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Check my Facebook page out. 